Hi everyone, I'm Anna, I'm the Children's Librarian at the Wayne County Public Library and I'm here with Kit, our library mascot, to welcome you to our summer reading program. Whether you join us through the library's website, our Facebook or YouTube, or you're watching at home on your television, we're so excited to share this time with you this summer. We're going to hear some great stories, maybe some songs, do some fun crafts and activities, so we're excited that y'all are here. Um, you can watch our videos, um, but we would encourage you to register for our summer reading program. If you register, you will receive a summer adventure packet. This will include your reading log, um, your craft supplies, and some activities that you can do at home along with us. Um, your reading log is really important, so you can track how much you're reading at home and earn some really cool prizes, so we encourage everybody to register. You can visit the library's Facebook page, call us on the phone, or visit our website to register. Um, we hope to have a great summer with you and to see you soon. Anna and this is Lauren from the Goldsboro Library and we are here for our summer reading program. We're so excited that y'all are here with us. Whether you're watching on our website, on Facebook, social media, wherever, or on your TV, we're excited to see you. All right, so this summer our theme for summer reading is Imagine Your Story. So we're going to read a lot of different kinds of stories. So this first week we're going to focus on folk tales. So lots of different kinds of folk tales in the world. Um, America has different stories than other countries. They kind of explain how things are the way that they are. A lot of them have animals in them. A lot of them have characters that are larger than life that do amazing things and have really fun adventures. So we're gonna read a couple today. All right, All right. so our first one is called Swamp Angel. This book was written by Anne Isaacs and illustrated by Paul Zielinski um, and published by Penguin Books. This book is pretty similar to Paul Bunyan if you've ever heard that story, um, but this one is a lady who is larger than any lady you've probably ever seen. All right, you can see her here. Look how big she was as a baby. <laughs> On August 1st, 1815, when Angelica Longrider took her first gulp of air on this earth, there was nothing about the baby to suggest she would become the greatest woodswoman in Tennessee. The newborn was scarcely taller than her mother and she couldn't even climb a tree without help. Silly have you ever seen a baby that big? <laughs> I have not. <laughs> Although her father gave her a shiny new ax to play with in the cradle, like any good Tennessee father would, she was a full two years old before she built her first log cabin. I would not give a baby an ax. <laughs> good to know. <laughs> By the time she was full grown, she was second to none in buckskin bravery, performing eye-popping wonders in the bogs and backwoods of Tennessee. You can see her here and see these people here. Look how big she is compared to these normal sized people. She is a giant, isn't she? When she was 12, a wagon train got mired in dejection swamp. The settlers had abandoned their covered wagons and nearly all hope besides. Suddenly, a young woman in a homespun dress tramped toward them out of the mist. She lifted those wagons like they were twigs in a puddle and set them on high ground. It is an angel, cried the pioneers. Ever since that time, Angelica Longrider has been known as the Swamp Angel. To this day, stories about swamp angels spring up like sunflowers along the wagon trails, and every one of them is true. Do you think they're all true? I think so. Once upon a summer in the Tennessee wilderness, there prowled a huge bear with a bottomless appetite for settler's grub. Why that varmint would rip the door off a food cellar and gobble up the whole winter's rations without even waiting for a napkin. He came to be known as Thunder and Tarnation because those were the words most commonly heard when he was spotted in the neighborhood. Many tried, but none could catch that low down pile of pelts. 
He was fast and wily, and his fur so thick, gunshots never reached his skin. Before long, thunder and tarnation had cleaned out half the root cellars in Tennessee. The settlers were desperate with no food to get them through the long winter ahead. So they sent word across the land of a competition to kill the bear. The reward for the successful hunter was to be Tarnation's enormous pelt, equal to a whole year's hunting and worth a lot more on account of how famous he was. Beyond that, the winner would earn a powerful reputation and the title of Champion Wildcat. Do you think you could catch this bear? I don't know if I would even try. Well, I mean, do you think she can do it, even as, as big as she is? I don't know, he uh. sounds, he's special. Yeah. Now, it's well known and a fact too that Tennessee daredevils are as plentiful as dew drops on corn. Pretty soon, there was a long line of men in coonskin caps waiting to sign up for the hunt. But when Swamp Angel stepped in line, one of the men called out, Hey, Angel, shouldn't you be at home mending a quilt? Mm. She said, quilting is men's work. That's well, true. how about baking a pie, Angel? I aim to, she said, a bear pie. You go, girl. She's ready. <laughs> <laughs> Their hoots and taunts didn't stop Swamp Angel from signing up and setting out to find that bear. Look, here she is back here. You can only see her head. Yeah, why are they giving her grief? She's bigger than all oh, of them she's combined. She's so big. I don't know. I don't understand it. Tarnation left a pretty clear trail. The first hunter was found wearing an empty molasses bucket and a grin on his face. Seemed he tried the sweet approach and got lit. It took 10 strong men to rescue the next hunter from his own bear trap. Look, he's stuck in there. That would hurt. Yeah, Ooh. it would. A third set out with a hardened hickory club, but ended up waist deep in toothpicks. <laughs> Another was discovered wandering in circles, clutching two fistfuls of fur. His head was completely bald and his beard was mighty scarce. Seems he traded pelts with Thunder and Tarnation and got the worst of the bargain. Bear ripped his hair right <laughs> off. Soon, Swamp Angel was the only one left who hadn't met up with Tarnation. Until one morning, she awoke from dozing in the shade of a creek to find that four-legged forest of stubble staring at her from across the stream. They faced off for a few minutes. Marmot, says Angel, I'm much obliged for that pelt you're carrying. Grrr, says Tarnation. <laughs> then they waded into the stream and started to fight. I mean, she's really big, but he's really big too. <laughs> Who do you think is going to win? Oh. I don't know. Swamp Angel took a hold of that bear and tossed him so high, he was still on the way up at nightfall. Even when the first star came out, there was no sign of him. Angel began to think she had lost him in the sky. Look, she threw him all the way up there. She must be super strong. Now, Angel was bound and determined to get Tarnation's pelt. Just at that moment, or a tornado whirled by with a spout clear up to the clouds. Swamp Angel grabbed hold of it and swung that twister around like a giant lasso in the heavens. She roped that bristled bandit and brought him crashing back down to earth. Look, she grabbed this tornado and caught that bear with it. <laughs> My goodness. Locked in a bear hug, Swamp Angel and Thundering Tarnation wrestled across the hills of Tennessee. They stirred up so much dust that those hills are still called the Great Smoky Mountains. You can kind of <laughs> see how foggy it looks over here. They fought for three days and three nights without a break. On the fourth day, they wrestled their way into a lake that was 50 feet deep. Tarnation pinned Angel to the muddy bottom with one of his gigantic paws. You can see him kind of down there. She's on the bottom. He's holding her down there. Do you think this is the end for Swamp no, Angel? No, I don't. To get a breath of air, she had to drink the whole lake dry. <laughs> hmm, that was mighty refreshing, said Angel. <laughs> but it didn't look good for Angel down in the muck under that mountain of mange. No matter how she struggled, she could not free herself from Tarnation's paw. Then she had an idea. She opened her pouch and emptied some dust onto the end of Tarnation's nose. He sniffed, threw back his head, 
and sneezed so hard the mud flew off the lake bottom and Angel with it. Look, look at his sneeze. He sneezed all this mud and there she goes up there. Hmm. She hiked back 10 miles from where she landed. So he sneezed her 10 miles away. And the fight commenced once more. Swamp Angel and Tarnation finally grew so tired, they fell asleep. But that didn't stop them. They kept wrestling in their sleep. Can you do that? <laughs> that would be so hard. Tarnation snored louder than a rock slide, while Angel snored like a locomotive in a thunderstorm. Their snoring rumbled through the earth, tumbling boulders and shaking trees loose. By morning, they had snored down nearly the whole forest. Look, all these trees fell down. <laughs> They're in here just snoring. Yeah, yeah they look His so tongue's tired. hanging out. They're so tired. That's what my dog looks like. Yeah, they're so <laughs> tired. He's asleep. The second biggest pine tree in Tennessee landed smack beside them. At the top of that tree was a beehive the size of a hill oozing rivers of honey. Now, after five days without food, they're probably pretty hungry, and Tarnation could not resist. He rolled over in his sleep, sank his jaws into that sweet syrupy honey. He guzzled and slurped, and Swamp Angel snored down one last tree. You know what? That tree fell down right on top of Thunder and Tarnation. That bear was dead as a stump and considerably flatter. When Angel awoke and saw what happened, she took off her hat, bowed her head, and offered up these words of praise. Confound it, varmint, if you weren't the most wondrous heap of trouble I ever came to grips with. Oh, Aww. she is. I sort of feel sorry for him. Yeah, even though she called him, she was like, you know what? He's a big deal. That was a good fight they had. That night, Tarnation fed everyone in Tennessee. I can tell you it was the biggest celebration the state has ever known. There were bear steaks and bear cakes, bear muffin, bear stuffing, bear roast, and bear toast. To wash it all down, there was berry wine. You could hear coat buttons popping as far away as Kentucky. The leftovers filled all the empty storehouses in Tennessee just before the first snowfall. So he had eaten up everybody's food, but then he ended up feeding them at the end. <laughs> that looks like a good party, huh? Yeah. Swamp Angel decided to keep Thundering Tarnation's pelt as a rug. It was too big for Tennessee, so she moved to Montana and spread that bare rug out on the ground in front of her cabin. Nowadays, folks call that the short grass prairie. So she drug that thing all the way across America. <laughs> now, you may think no more was ever seen of Thundering Tarnation, but that is not the case. When Angel threw him up in the sky, he crashed into a pile of stars, making a lasting impression. You can still see him there any clear night. You can see there's a constellation up there in the shape of a bear. So I guess that's how we got that constellation Thanks. was Swamp Angel and Thunder and Tarnation. Hey, the end. I like that one a lot. I that's pretty too. funny. Yeah, it is. It hey. is really funny. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a story for us today. Oh, I lost my little. Uh, about the jackalope. Do you guys know what a jackalope is? Well, the jack part comes from a jackrabbit, and the lope part. They say it's deer antlers, but to me that would be like an, an antelope. antelope. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's a it's a jackrabbit with really big antlers. So this story is uh, retold by J. Uh, e. Bright and illustrated by Lucille Lamont, and it's published by Ozu Publishing. Shh! Keep your voice down. I'm hunting jackalope. Me? I'm Bernard Ballgladder, but folks call me Old Bernie. Mind my equipment there. Don't trip over my net. Of course, I'm aware jackalope are legendary, but they're also as real as you or me. Some say they're extinct, but you might see one if you get lucky. What does a jackalope look like? It's a hybrid of a hare and a deer. It resembles a big, angry rabbit with an impressive rack of antlers. It's a dangerous critter. If you come hunting, 
You'll need leg armor like I'm wearing if you don't want your shins gored. Listen to old Bernie and don't go after a jackalope alone. One person, even armed to the teeth, is no match for that beast's speed, vicious buck teeth, sharp horns, and nasty attitude. I know, poor, <laughs> poor, maybe they're misunderstood, I don't know. Okay, don't believe your ears either. Jackalopes can mimic sounds to distract predators. They can howl like a wolf, scream like a cougar, shriek like a hawk, or growl like a bear. They confuse humans by shouting, look over there, Bernie, it's getting away. Wait, he's saying they can talk? <laughs> I guess Oh so. my goodness. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm camp camping in the wilderness around a late night bonfire, I've heard the jackalope's tenor voices joining in with my singing. Their eerie accompaniment is always unwelcome. Long ago, herds of jackalopes hopped across the prairies, terrorizing the natives. A gang of jackalopes is called a flaggerdoot. That's what it says. <laughs> Only solitary jackalopes have been spotted in recent centuries. Once in a blue moon, you might find a female jackalope in a forest clearing sleeping on her back. Then you can milk her carefully. Folk medicines can be made from this potent liquid, although those recipes are lost. The animal only breeds during flashes of lightning. It often gets tangled in its own antlers. See why it's almost extinct? The first hunter to capture a jackalope was Douglas Herrick in Douglas, Wyoming. He had it taxidermied. Do you know what taxidermied means? Stuff. Stuffed. Yeah. The stuffed beast came, became so popular that the town throws a festival in the jackalope's honor every summer. I've been to this party and it is a proper hoedown. The town also issues hunting licenses that are only usable on June 31st. It's coming up. Wait a minute. June, <laughs> June? Just one day. <laughs> but June 31st, that's not a thing. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. Only 30 days in June. Mm, hmm. Tricky, tricky. Your jackalope hunting license is valid, right? Oh, well, then you can't join me. Sorry. I don't expect to catch a jackalope anyway. The point is not the catching. It's the searching. The end. I don't think we'll ever find a jackalope. I don't if we can only look on a day that doesn't exist. I know. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So those are our, our folk tales for you today. All right. Well, thank y'all for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed these larger than life tales. <laughs> if you see a jackalope, let us know. <laughs> Please. All right. Yes. Well, y'all have a good week. See you later. Bye.